I like to introduce myself by my personal mission because I feel like that's the fastest way to describe me. So my personal mission here in this world is to help others love more, give more, and be more through their business and their personal life through using the art of authentic relating in their everyday life. And I just happen to do that through relationship marketing. The biggest struggle is always getting started, right? Like just choosing to believe and get started and follow your passion. So that's always a continual struggle, struggle even as you try to level up. And I think by doing that, um, and, and being in that place and that mindset when you're first starting out, you tend to make mistakes along the way with accepting less than what you're worth. Yeah, so my journey into paid public speaking wasn't like, oh, I want to get into paid public speaking. So it's a little bit, I think it was a little bit different. My goal uh, was to help educate and teach more about what relationship marketing is and what it was at the time. And going to, kind of going back to where I live in a very small city, this was before the day of live video and all this awesomeness when I started the agency in 2010. And so all I had to reach these brands that weren't on social media at the time, trying to tell them the value of social media was inviting them to learn about it, how they could grow their business. My name is Abhi Arya, father of two girls, six dogs, husband to a superwoman, a streetcar racer turned hotelier, now social media marketer and founder of the internet moguls of the world. So Jessica, how would you introduce yourself to the world uh, as with your hero introduction? Yeah, I like to introduce myself by my personal mission because I feel like that's the fastest way to describe me. So my personal mission here in this world is to help others love more, give more and be more through their business, and their personal life through using the art of authentic relating in their everyday life. And I just happen to do that through relationship marketing. Awesome. Lovely. Uh, girls, your turn. Question. Okay. Do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. So my first question is, what was the biggest struggle and mistake you made that you suggest um, new entrepreneurs that are just starting to build their business would avoid? Yeah, I would say the biggest struggle is always getting started, right? Like just choosing to believe and get started and follow your passion. So that's always a continual struggle, struggle even as you try to level up. And I think by doing that um, and, and being in that place and that mindset when you're first starting out, you tend to make mistakes along the way with accepting less than what you're worth. And so I did that very early on with playing small and really thinking, okay, because I'm in this small town, because my area that I live, uh, Lima, Ohio, is a very small city and social media was very new. Internet marketing was not even heard of. Still, they're kind of adapting to it right now. But the pricing model was not set up for success at the beginning. And I started taking on um, some clients that didn't really value what a relationship and partnership should look like. So it was it was a struggle at the beginning as well as a lot of lessons learned on it's okay to say no, it's okay to stand your ground um, with what you know, the value that you're bringing and can offer to them when it is a partnership with the right audience. So um, it's it was a lot of those lessons. Now I, I'm, I'm not afraid to say no to, to people that I know it's not gonna be a good relationship and do stand firm and you know, the value that um, comes along with the price that's being presented for the partnership. Got it. Raya? Okay. Um, so your talk was awesome uh, at Social Media Marketing World. And um, so how did you get into paid public speaking? And what is your advice for the audi our audience who does want to get into that business? Yeah, so my journey into paid public speaking wasn't like, oh, I want to get into paid public speaking. So it's a little bit I think it was a little bit different. My goal uh, was to help educate and teach more about what relationship marketing is and what it was at the time. And going to, kind of going back to where I live in a very small city, this was before the day of live video and all this awesomeness when I started the agency in 2010. And so all I had to reach these brands that weren't on social media at the time, trying to tell them the value of social media was inviting them to 
learn about it, how they could grow their business. And so to do that, instead of me going like door to door or cold calling, which I'm not a fan of and don't believe in, right? I, I instead said, hey, I can teach you how to grow your business on Facebook or you know, maybe that was one of the topics, for example, at the time that was popular. And so I would bring, um, invite these businesses to do that and they would just come to this like lunch and learn. And the people that resonated with that message would then um, eventually become clients because I knew they weren't hiring me because they could figure out and Google how to do Facebook, right? Um, it was really just about them seeing the value in it, but didn't want to spend their time doing it. So long story short, I started offering more of these teaching sessions and because of that got referred to do more of these uh, for other businesses in other areas. Um, and then as the requests started coming in more and more, I had to look at it like, I love doing this and I do want to continue doing teaching, um, but I also need to value the time. So some of the, um, when I realized that it was in a more high demand, then I started putting a cost associated with some of those traveling to, to go speak and, and present in those areas. And that's when I had to start researching, okay, what does this world look like? <laughs> so the advice that I would give is first figure out what you're passionate about that you would do for free if, if there was no payment involved. Um, and is it something that somebody would be willing to pay for, right? Like, is it a value? What can they get out of it? And then educate yourself on what you need to have in place. So I knew, okay, if I'm going to take this part seriously, um, I needed to hire a mentor and a coach in order to see what I need to have besides just the cost associated to, to public speaking. And so then I got a, you know, a media kit created, some videos created, a personal website, and took, treated that as a business too. So um, when you take it serious in that way and you do want to make an income stream of that, from it, then learn from others that's kind of already paved the path. But don't immediately think um, just because you're good at speaking that you're good at, um, you, you can make just a career out of it. It has to be something that you're passionate about and and that others can find value in. Awesome. Well, <laughs> so Jessica, you said that you created a website, you created a, uh, a media kit of sorts, and you created videos. Can you tell us what went into those videos and how you use those videos to get more speaking assignments? Sure, yeah. So I created a couple different videos. The first was videos in examples of what I was presenting. So I would have like a sample full on talk, right? That I've done one of the ones I did for free, just so somebody could get a sample of who I am, what I, what I do. And I have that on YouTube for more people to find me. Right. And then the other video that I created was a, what they call like a speaker video, <laughs> which is snippets of different talks that you've done, or maybe things that you've said, uh, along with testimonials from others that have been in attendance, attendance from, those presentations. And then really the whole goal is to try to recreate the energy that you're going to bring in that room. And right. that's what that video should be about. So it's really trying to see uh, snippets of what you're about, like what the speaking uh, is going to be about, kind of what your focus is, what your expertise is, as well as the energy that you're going to bring, bring to the room and what the audience um, is going to get out of it. Because as a event organizer, their goals are to bring good talent, right? And to make sure that everybody has a good experience. So that's what you need to put in that video of a reassurance of that, that you've done this before, they can be confident in hiring you, that your talks align with what their goals are to get out of the event, as well as other attendees have, have enjoyed what you've had to say. So that was the second video. And then the third video, it was just, you know, other people kind of advocating or, or just kind of a testimonials piece. Um, and that, again, had some B-roll footage of just different examples of where I've spoke, um, along with you put kind of like some of your accolades in there. <laughs> I guess it's called, I call that the humble brag video, if you want to call yeah. it that. Um, and then uh, from there, the media kit is just the things that people are going to ask for. Your headshot, what your topics are, because usually they're like, you, they want you to turn in, you know, kind of your title, your um, description, and then what people are going to get out of it, as well as your your bio sheet, if you will, um, and, and accolades, if you will. So I put that on a media kit. And then that way somebody can kind of preview it ahead of time and, and think of it as your speaker resume. Um, and when you get all that created, you can put that on the on your website. And my website, actually my new one's going live like right now as we speak. Literally. Wow. <laughs> um, thank you. I'm excited. Uh, so the 
on the website, many people's goal for speaker websites are to book more speaking gigs. Mine definitely, you know, I want to, of course, get some of that out of it. But mine was more to let people know what I was about. So if they're watching an interview like this or reading something, they Google and they're like, oh, okay, that's what relationship marketing is. Oh, okay. I see. And then kind of build into a community. Um, that's my main goal of the website is building more community, not just getting the speaking gigs. So just, uh, so I understood, you know, the three components of the kinds of videos that you send and these, most of them are, you obviously have a set template, but before you send that video, say you're sending it to a different audience. Do you make another video to say, hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm going to send you another video, which has got my, so do you personalize the intro? Yes, of course. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. So uh, before I send anything, if I'm following up, I'll always do a, a video email back and just say, hey, you know, thanks so much for reaching out. I'd love to set up time, you know, and just definitely personalize your response back to them. I also like to have an interview or just a quick chat, even if they don't want to do it over the phone, I'll, I'll send them the questions that I have before I would agree to speak at an event because I want to know, um, you know, who is their audience? What's their goals of the event? Um, and, and what's a little bit of the track record of the event, uh, meaning like, is it just people that are paying to speak there, right? Because there's still some of those events around. I don't really want to like align myself with that. Um, and, you know, who is going to be in attendance? So, so I make sure that I can add value um, to, to the event and that it's going to be a, a wise investment for both of us, right? So uh, I try to at least have a talk with them first before I agree to speak or and before they agree to hire me, right? I don't want them to have um, one you know, notion of what I, they think I want to talk about who I am. And then I go all in on organic marketing and feel good stuff. And they're, you know, preaching something different, you know, so I wouldn't let them know what they're getting. So again, from the first video that you send, the personalization in the video and the fact that you want to have a conversation with them beforehand, it's relationship marketing throughout in your, your business okay. DNA. Always, you know, yeah. you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not selling a cookie cutter product. You're selling a relationship. And like you said in your talk, awesome. Love that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. For, for all those people who were not part of social media marketing world and did not see how your room was one of the most packed rooms in, uh, at that conference. And, uh, like, uh, you know, and it took almost one hour for you to get free from people who wanted selfies with you and all of that. Can you tell us what, how that talk was, or maybe give a synopsis of that talk for, for, for our audiences? Yeah. So one, I'm humbled by everybody that was in the room. And it, I think it speaks volumes that of where we're all, where we are today, right? Like both as there are people that owned a business, there are people that are agencies that are in there and there are people that are just wanting to do something different uh, in their, their solo career, right? And, and I, the talk was geared around relationship marketing, which means that we're really focused on working with people that we can connect with on a real level. We can add value. And then we're not just focused on selling something. We're focusing on building a sense of getting belonging over buying. And what I mean by belonging is really focusing on who your ideal audience is and once they become part of your community, that you're really focused on making sure that they are delighted and advocates for you. So I like to say that it's turning your followers and like social media from thinking about followers and, and people that are trying to grow their business there into true fans for you. Because there's a big difference between just a follower and then somebody that's willing to advocate for you and share what you have out there and, and wow. mention you, you know, online. Your clients into true advocates for you. So people that are willing to refer you on to other businesses and to their coworkers and, and really give you a good testimonial. Your community into collaborators. So people like this, you get relationship marketing. That's why you were saying, you know, about the personalized video and, and that's why you were in that room too, into collaborators. And now we're collaborating, we're doing this together, right? Like that's what it's about. And your team members into evangelists because your team members are the ones that are typically client facing if you have a team and you want them to believe what you, is at your core company. So starting oh. with the focus of marketing from the inside out is really what it's about. So being being the the business um, brand that you want to to really have somebody have a feeling about before they get to work with you, and having your team members also believe that too. So I, it's relationship marketing was the core message of it, but it's teaching a new way of doing business that there's enough work out there for all of us that we really just need to be focused on 
serving our clients better, faster, smarter, and, and more relationship focused because 90% of all buying decisions are starting online right now. Oh. And 60% of the buying cycle is over before somebody's even talking to a representative at your business. So people are making decisions just based on what they see. And the only way of, of them understanding the experience that your company is going to be bringing to them is by them having a conversation with your community, with your fans, you know, and with your team members. So really um, getting that sense of a feeling out there so you can stand out amongst the competition is, is where it's at. So Lovely. The short okay. and short and dirty of it, I guess. And a funny thing is next year, well, in six months, Google just rolled out their new, uh, or announced their new update that's going to be the page experience update. And they're basing it on a lot of these factors now too. What is your customer's experience um, like on your website even? To say whether you're going to show up in search results. So all of these things that are happening, dark social, Google's new updates, Facebook, uh, Instagram, not showing the likes anymore. Everything's moving toward just being good humans, you know, and I know. that's the ones that are going to I, like, I, I like the way you said that. You said you brought marketing back to being a good human. I love that. So, you know, you, you have to be good at what you do. And I, what, what I loved about uh, the last 10 minutes is that you seem to be a believer in saying that I don't need a million followers. I just need to, I need to take things very slow and make sure that because your audience will only talk good things about you. If you know, not, they won't talk good things about you. If you're all over the place, it has to be a small, it has to be a village, right? But everybody knows your name and knows what you do. Exactly. If you look at me on Instagram, there's many people that have a lot more followers than I do. And honestly, I don't post every single day, but I'm communicating on there every single day. It, a lot of times in the inbox because that's where real relationships happen, right? I'm, I'm sending messages back and forth. I'm having conversations. I'm asking people about their day. Um, and I don't have a huge following there, which is fine. But I get business from that. And in that, even though that's, that's amazing, it's not like that's my only MO, but sure. that is the ripple effect of what will happen is you will grow in your business when you – focus on just being real first and, and building one-to-one -one relationships. Got it. Uh, Aviana? So my second question is, um, how do you balance out your family time with your business time? Like yeah. growing your business? Yeah, great question. So um, right now it's a little different than what how I would answer this like a year ago with, with working from home. But um, so, and also a lot different than when I first started out. So when I first started out, I was very much working a lot more. Um, but I still believe that there's not really such thing as like work-life balance. I believe that there's a thing, a thing of balance, which means right now I may be spending more time working, like when I'm launching my personal website, right? And I'm, I'm diving in and spending a little bit more time there. But then next week, I'm going on a vacation with my family where I'm spending time there. So I think you really just have to have um, an emotional intelligence to know what is priority without neglecting your, your priority of your, your family, priority in your business and priority in your family. And so it's really just making sure that you do what's needed with your business, but then also making quality time with your family. So like... Every time that I was driving my kids to school, for example, and now we just do it at the breakfast table, I'm asking them things that they're grateful for, not just like listening to music, right? Like I'm making sure that we have quality time and quality conversations there. We're not just watching TV at night. We're doing something. So making every everything that you do together, making sure that it has more of an impact versus it just kind of be you being there, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Raya? Okay. Uh, so my next question is, how did you get into the right ecosystem to be able to, um, you know, like get more clients, to be able to network and be able to speak at social media marketing world? A lot of people struggle with um, kind of, you know, getting into the right network and making the right friends. So how did you get into the right ecosystem? Very good question. Um, I think some of it is just the law of attraction, I guess. Um, but really it, it kind of goes back and I hate being 
redundant <laughs> what I'm saying, but like I really did focus on making one-to-one conversations and really meant it when I went to my first year going to social media marketing world. I was there from the very first year and I just observed who was first before I even got to the event, I should say. I looked and seen who was speaking. I went and followed them online and then the people that I read what they were about and their what they were talking on that resonated with me personally. I did a like a C first on Facebook and a Twitter list on Twitter so I could make sure that I was connecting with them more often they were seeing my my name. And I was genuinely connecting with them. It wasn't just like a like, right? Oh. And then when we got to social media marketing world, I already knew who I wanted to meet up with. And some people I'd even message them ahead of time, like, I'm really excited to meet you. I love what you said here in this blog post. And I love what you stand for and da 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 da, right? Like, so they knew that I was not trying to sell them anything. I right. really wanted to connect with them. Focus my time at the event with making one to one connections with those individuals as well as others that I just observed that were being good people um, at the event. And then from there stayed connected with them. Those connections turned to referrals. I was both referring those people that I had met to others that I had met that I thought could really um, align with each other well. And then they were doing the same for me. And from there, uh, the community grew. Lovely. So you said that uh, you, you researched them on Facebook and Twitter and the ones whose message resonated with you, you actually d didn't just like their messages from time to time. You sent them personal messages, read their blog posts and said, this is what I liked. And so you relationship marketing before you actually meet them in person. And so, and then when you landed up and met them for the first time, the first handshake was, oh, I already know you and thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, uh, and even a couple of them, like I brought a pair of crazy socks um, for one that I knew loved crazy socks. So I was trying not to like step the, across the line of being like stalkerish, <laughs> you know, looking oh, like the crazy know lady, but also showing that I was taking notice of what they were saying because uh, I really, I really did. You know, I thought they were awesome. And now, like I host an event in my community, Social Media Week Lima that's grown uh, quite a bit to be one of the largest social media conferences in the Midwest. And a lot of those cool and core speakers that um, are really looked at as thought leaders in this space are coming to speak at it at this very small community, right? Um, because of those relationships that were formed then. Wow, that's fantastic. Is it is it Peru? Uh, Lima, Ohio. Okay, I thought it's Peru, Lima, Peru, okay. No, nope. we get that a lot though, but it's pronounced Lima. <laughs> but, Lima. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Got that's it. why they first agreed to come. They thought it was Peru, I don't know. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> So, so tell us, you know, I, you know, uh, my, my, my mother is, uh, I inherited this from my mother that, uh, and I think many of us did, when you go to somebody's house, never go empty handed, even if it's a suite, you pick up something. And when that, when somebody, when you say, and you borrowed, uh, somebody's brought you fruits or some ice cream or something, you'd never give the, uh, the utensil back empty, you know, you put something mm -hmm. back in it. So I always learned that from my mother and every single digital marketing conference. I, I'm 43 years old. We, I did my first website in 1999. It was the first ever hotel website in the country of India. I mean, a standalone hotel. Nobody had done it. No Google Expedia. Anyways, from those times to now, I, one thing that I did always was I carried a gift with me. And now in the office, we have a cupboard where we have gifts uh, based on people who have kids. We, we love dogs. We have six dogs. So definitely stuff for dogs. And depending on where we are going, I try to pick up something. You know what? This guy is always talking about uh, his grandfather. Let me pick up some. And it is such a beautiful feeling to be able to have something to offer when you're meeting somebody. It's like, oh my God, how come you were so thoughtful? And you just, you do it because you want to do it. And uh, not because you wanted to pay off, but it, it, it just, uh, it's a beautiful feeling first. But also when it comes to marketing and building a relationship, I mean, I, that's, that's why we said we stayed to the very end of your talk and we loved every single thing that you said. That's so sweet. And yes, you had a good family teaching you those lessons. My family did the same thing. It's like, and it means a lot. I think people love when they feel like, oh, you listened. Like you took the time to listen. Like one of the people that were on my talk, she gave me a keychain. It was like a little keychain. It just had like a dandelion on it. And I was like in tears because she had seen um, a painting 
that I had done for my dad, where it was my daughter blowing a dandelion, making a wish for him. And so it was so thoughtful and so meaningful. And it was like the littlest token to just show. And I, you know, will forever remember her. I didn't know her before that. And I still check on her ever since um, the event. Like that was just something super meaningful. So for all the viewers listening, like I said, this is Internet Moguls of the World. It's a family digital marketing school. Our aim is to get families together, kids, parents, grandparents, everybody learn one aspect of digital marketing and start your business to be able to, because this is something that you can do from anywhere in the world. Spend more time for, uh, with, uh, together. Don't spend time in traffic. Don't spend time away. Life is too short. Spend time with your family. That is our mission. And in this mission for everybody who's listening, you're saying build connections one by one, one by one. But in this rat race where everybody's like, if I don't have a million followers, you know, that means I'm not loved. You know, if I don't have a uh, hundred thousand dollars in affiliate income coming on the side, I haven't done any marketing. And you're, you're saying twice, you mentioned, go back to being human and just, you know, what our parents have taught us, social media may just be another tool, but the relationships that human beings share, human beings share with each other have never changed. They've always remained the same. So thank you for reminding all of us of that. Absolutely. No, and it's so true. And yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, just think about it for yourself. Like what kind of party or event would you like to go to? You know, five of your close friends in a backyard hanging out, or are you going to a, a place full of people that you don't really have a good connection with anyone, right. you know, and maybe full of people. So I think it's a good reminder. And it's also where we're shifting as um, in, in online anyway, where dark social is growing, where private communities are going to be the norm. Um, mm -hmm. People are craving it, they're building it, and they're spending more and more of their time in the inbox. So you want to be invited to that conversation and the only way to do so is to have a genuine connection with people. Awesome. So, so tell us, uh, you know, my next question is, when people are starting a new business, you know, I heard Gary Vee talk the other day um, about communities. You just mentioned three seconds ago, communities, um, Facebook groups, can you tell us a little bit about how, how, what would be your advice on people wanting to build communities through Facebook groups and all of that? Yeah. So first think about, again, going back to your core of how you're adding value, how you want to show up, what you want people to know about you and then who your audience is. So who they are at their core too, of what they want to learn, what their pain points are, what their goals are, and think of what you can build to serve that community. It doesn't need to be just your business name and now you're turning into a group. Like that's not the goal. The goal is to create something that's there to bring others together around a common purpose, a common um, thing that people care about. So um, my friend Bella, she's created one from like pets, uh, sitters, you know, and, and she's grown that group to be, you know, a six figure group, um, making six figures, I mean, and it was, it was just there to serve first and add value. Um, it could be something like we started groups for one of our clients that was a staffing agency. And this was years ago, uh, before Facebook had jobs there on Facebook, but it was, the group was called jobs in Lima, Ohio, and where people were, you know, just posting what jobs were available there. And then job seekers were coming there as well to find the jobs and uh, that they were able to grow relationships by facilitating the conversation there. Um, so think about what you can do that kind of aligns with your business, right? Like, and where you can add value and then not just which ones you can build, but which ones that may already be built that you could join and add value in. Like one of our mutual friends, um, uh, uh, Mitch Jackson, the attorney, right? Like he has a group for um, legal minds and how he, how they can show up in social and what the rules are and that kind of thing. And, you know, he's invited me and others from the digital space, if you will, that aren't attorneys to come in and add value in that group. And we've been able to build relationships then with attorneys from there that's turned into some business and, and things like that. So again, thinking about belonging over just getting people to buy. So um, how you can show up and serve and get invited to those conversations as well as facilitate those conversations in other channels is what's going to be the norm in the future as people are looking for niche communities to serve them. Got it. Perfect. It's lovely. Uh, Jessica, tell us, you know, we, we're the, for the first time, we all feel united as a world for the first time ever. 
under very challenging circumstances. Many people are wanting, and especially through our digital marketing school, we want more people to start their digital marketing journeys to be able to either learn digital and become digital marketers like all of us, or use digital to further their business or to start a new business. Somebody's in a challenging position, they've lost their jobs, and they're listening to this interview. What would be your few things to tell them how they should get started on a business ASAP using any of these digital tools? Yeah. Um, first, ask your community. Reach out. Tell them your situation, right? Be vulnerable and let them know where you're at, what you're looking to do, and ask them to point you in the right direction, too, of people that you may already know that can help support you. Um, if you're truly looking to get started in a business, um, I went to what's called the Entrepreneur Center here in Lima that's, that's um, ran by a college here. Many areas have it. A lot of people don't know about it. The Small Business Developmental Center um, and the SBA, they fund these all across the world. And it's free resources for individuals to get their business set up because our countries are ran by small businesses. Oh. They employ more people than anyone else. So they want more small businesses here. So make sure that you can look and see what resources are free and available to at least get you registered, your tax ID number, all of that. Then if you get that legal stuff done, um, then um, you want to start out. And I, I mean, I have a guide instead of going through all the steps. If you want, I can provide the, the link. It's awesome. bit.ly forward slash all caps care, C-A-R-E, capital M, and then O-R-E, lowercase. So care more. Um, the care is just capital M, is capital and the more. But that will give you a guide to help you to identify your brand messaging, right? Your ideal customer, who and how you stand out. So who you can align with that already maybe have some communities that you could align with. So they're introducing you to this trusted audience that already trust them that will help rapidly grow your community in a way because you're growing it through somebody that already has trust established as well as coming up with content ideas and getting started with presenting yourself on digital so you're not just there's so many people when they get started they sign up for everything and then they don't spend right. their time wisely you know it's rather it's better to focus in on what channels should I go on and and how much time do I really have that I can invest in it um, so you can choose those wi wisely and grow from there. Got it. Aviana? Yeah, so my uh, last question is we use the term internet moguls a lot. And for us, an internet mogul means someone who spends quality time with their family, but also works hard on improving their business and growing their business. So what would your definition of an internet mogul be? I like your definition. Uh, I think that's awesome. I love what you guys are doing. But I would definitely say it's someone that is living by example and really someone that is inspiring others to see that there's a better way. Um, the whole reason why I started Now Marketing Group is because I wanted to create a place that I wanted to work at. And I was uh, a little frustrated at the time with like corporate America and just um, how they could treat people just based upon what they were selling at the time because I had a really great job there and I got, ended up getting sick and um, my job was taken from me at that time because I couldn't work physically at that time. So I knew that I wanted to create a place where not only others could do their best work, but where they felt safe to know that they're looked at as a person first and right. I value the, their input and, and how they show up. So when they're sick, they're sick. Like, or if they need to be there for their kids, kindergarten graduation, that's more important, right? right? Like those kinds of things. So I think being able to balance what's really important in that moment is what uh, should be the focus. And I think somebody that can lead by example, doing that and inspire others that we can all do this together and still run successful companies with putting family at the, at its core is very powerful. So I love your, I love your definition of it. <laughs> awesome. Brian? Okay, so um, we wrote a book about a year and a half ago called uh, Bedtime Stories for Tomorrow's Entrepreneurs. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and in one of the 
chapters, we talked about rituals and why they're important and standing your beliefs, not letting anyone else, you know, judge you based off of that. So do you have any rituals that have helped you um, to get to where you are today? Yes, I do them all the time. So um, each morning I do gratitude um, and I do those with my girls at the breakfast table or when we're driving to school. Um, so we start off the day with just what we're, grat- what we're grateful for. And then um, I always take two times a day, I have it set on my phone where I will just meditate um, and just focus on calm and peace. Um, and then my other rituals are learning. Um, I block out at least two hours a week to learn something new. Um, and then I write out um, my affirmations <laughs> that I read uh, every morning and every night that are just like kind of I am statements just because you go out and, and when you're out in the world, there's just so much doubt that's put into you. And if you can just keep um, that positivity going, then, um, you know, that's, that's just the only way really <laughs> to, to be able to share your light with others. That, and then um, I listen to podcasts on driving um, that are more inspirational kind of stuff. And also uh, when I sleep, I listen to like binary beats um, to, to keep it all, keep, keep oh. it all more positive, I guess. <laughs> Lovely. That's that, those are some valuable insights. We would have put yeah. bullet notes when we edit this. Uh, yeah, I'll Jessica, send you a picture you know, of my board. <laughs> sorry, what's that? I said I'll send you a picture of my board. Oh, oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. That make it. That make the editing so much more fun. Uh, <laughs> Jessica, you know, in in your in your talk, you spoke about many actionable tips that people were you know, taking notes. Can you share some of them here with us? Yeah, so um, all of them are in that care workbook as well, but uh, just a couple here. So a a couple of them we mentioned, like use the native tools that are built in. So if somebody is connecting with you or you're wanting to connect with someone online, send them an audio message, send them a video message. Use some of the native tools that are built in and think more technique over just tools, right? Like how can I use what's already built in here on many of these tools to make a more meaningful connection. So audio messages are powerful. Video messages are powerful. Um, Commenting uh, on your, or posting rather, on your own social media channels. Read your post out loud before you just post it um, as you're writing it to make sure that it sounds human, (laughs) that you would say it to someone sitting across from you. And that it has um, the ability to start a conversation. So instead Uh of just saying, you know, here's my interview with so-and-so and then post the link, you would say, what are your thoughts about, you know, balancing work and family? You know, what's your number one ritual to get this done or something? Here's the interview that we have here. Let us know your thoughts or whatever, you know, cause you want people to engage. And then when they do engage, you want to make sure you're commenting back, not just liking what they say to keep the conversation okay. going. Um, those are a few tips. The other super powerful one, just a, one other um, part of it, and this is all part of, by the way, the care, how you can out-care your competition. So I'm I love that. Um, out-care. That is so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So CARE stands for capturing attention, articulating your message, relationship focus, and building exceptional experiences. So um, each of these are a step process, and I'm giving you just a couple nuggets from these, but... Another one is creating a brand manifesto for your business because that's your declaration statement. So if we're talking about how will people connect with you online if they're not talking with you yet, like if they're just looking at your website, right? Things like that. How can you show up in a way that people can get to know your brand on a real level? And it first starts with creating that brand manifesto internally that's kind of like your declaration. And this is um, the one statement that you can make that then you know the t- tone of voice to use in your social posts. You know the tone of voice to, to use and capture in your images. You know who you're trying to connect with. Um, all of those things can kind of tie back to that brand manifesto. So there are some examples in that care workbook, but also you can just Google search um, brand manifesto online. And there's some really powerful examples that will come up in, in a guide to help you uh, create your own. I wrote that down too. <laughs> oh. uh, Jess, uh, uh, what, Jessica, does it ever get easy to sign new clients? 
because you know I love what you said. Build relationships with people. You know what? Like I said, I, I want to tell you this. I've got two amazing parents. My dad is seventy-one. Mom is sixty-five. Uh, mom would not like me telling you uh, her age on a public forum like this, but uh, my mom and dad used to be models back in the day, and they used to be uh, uh, almost India's first supermodels, and I'm very proud to say that. Oh, anyway, cool. so um, they're both entrepreneurs, and they both work eight, ten hours even now. You know, busy with doing whatever they're doing. Uh, my dad always has been like, you know, take care of your product. Your product has to be best, the best in the market, and then when you can sell. uh then go out there and sell 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 you know every day you should be selling my mom is like you know what you don't need to do any selling if you got five customers love them like your family they will go ahead and sell for you so you know i i i your mom on my team like i know i that's, that's that's you know that i when i when i'm speaking to you the messages that you're giving i'm like you know what i'm i'm uh, i understand that you know there's a value system which is uh, you know which is similar so and and also your demeanor the way we talk you don't seem to be a digital marketer who's in a hurry to say you know what let me get stuff done so what is your message to the digital marketers or any business owner listening to this how i need to pay my bills i need those two three clients to make 3 4000 dollars a month yeah. and i like jessica's demeanor slow and steady take care of your customers but i still need money this quarter how 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 should we answer that question Oh, I'm definitely working. Um and so and but my demeanor, people can feel it. It's almost like have you ever went to a car dealer shop uh, or a car lot and you drive up and all these people like surround you. You're like, "Oh my god, like do does anyone want to buy then?" Right. You know, not at all. But if you're there and and you're approaching, you know, and somebody's like, "Oh, you'd love that, you know, um sink that they have." But do you have kids, you know, and ask you questions about you? Then you're more likely to uh go into a conversation with them. Sure. So I'm not saying don't sell. What I'm saying is don't be salesy, right? Sure. Like so when uh because people can sense it. They can sense when they feel like this pushiness or a sales um approach coming on and you can just ask yourself that question like if you feel like you're being sold to, you're going to back away. But if you feel that somebody's there to genuinely help you, you're more likely to give them your business because the trust is built and you feel more comfortable. So I've never had a sales rep. I was able to use these methods and grow to a million dollar agency in less than a year by not selling. I sold, but I wasn't being salesy, right? Like so it it really is um not sweating it uh, and pushing it. There's always things that you can do um to look at your methods and your technique just to see if there's a structure in place that allows people to find the answers that they're looking for you to find out who you are about and let them sell themselves uh basically until the end of the transaction where you're going to ask for the sale but they're already going to be convinced that they want it uh by the time that they get there got it jessica do you do you work with remote teams Um so I do have an office where some of my team works in there. We haven't been in there a few months with all the covid stuff going on. Um but I also have team members that are other places in the US that um have worked remote. Even from the beginning though, we've only worked in the office. Each person has only worked in the office 2 days a week. Um and the rest of the time from home just because I think it's silly like most of them are driving 30 minutes or so. Right. Um just to get into the office, but allowed us to collaborate um in person and do team outings and things like that, but Honestly we're finding a new way of doing that with with uh what's going on with covid anyway. So so my question is so for all the people who are watching right now and wanting to build digital agencies or or semi digital businesses and to be, and if because you've been doing this for a while and you've been twice a week and then everything else what would be your advice to them do you need to have very good systems and sops in you know in place only you know what do you need to run a business like this in the future? Yeah, that's a huge mistake I see all the time with uh people doing this. They don't do the pro- the discovery process is the most important. You need to have a system. You need to have the appropriate discovery process so you can find out what you're who you're going to be working with, if it's a good fit, and then if you can get to that part, then make the proposal, spend more time talking about what you what's not included as well as what's included. So you are all on the same page. I think so many people get so excited about a sale coming in, they don't right. do the work necessarily 
necessary at the beginning that's going to save them years and of trouble and and stuff at the end uh, if they can even stay that long with the client because the client's most like I thought you did this so then they'll end up doing it save the client and then they're spending all this time and not making more money um, instead of just setting it up at the beginning so yes system in place I mean everything that we do I could leave Wow, and it's gonna run smooth, right? Like we, That's it's fantastic. clockwork wow. um, that that it runs. So wow, that is music to my ears. I need to book a private concert call with you to understand how that works. So not only with your clients, and you have systems with your teams as well. Systems. Oh yeah, the team does. A, I mean, they're amazing, right? Like all of us go through the same process. Now, granted, there's always going to be someone because. You're, you know, the face, the one that's out there that people see. They're like, I want to work with you. I'm like, you really don't. Like, I love you and I will definitely help you. But my team is really good at this and they have the top more time and they're going to make sure that, um, you know, everything that we believe is tied with this. And I love working with clients too, but not every client can you work with, right? It's not realistic. And some of them are way better working with another person and you, as long as everybody's on the same page and doing the same thing, everyone on my team believes relationship marketing. They all are following the principles that I'm saying. I'm just the one saying it. Which means that when you hire people, you go through as much of a, oh, yes. a KYC, know your, know your uh, colleague, let me say that, know your oh, yes. process as much as you edit the clients that you work with. Amen. Amen, amen to that. <laughs> Those are make or break for your business. Every that client is- you take on, every team member you take on, I always say it's either adding culture credit or brand credit or brand debt, culture debt. You know, so awesome. you have to look at how you're investing in every brand relationship. Debt or brand credit. I like that. Mm-hmm.